Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back at ECMID Live TV. It is three o'clock in the afternoon, Central European time, and we are broadcasting to you from Cologne, Germany. And it is with great pleasure that I can introduce to you our next guest via live stream. And that is the immediate past president and current guidelines officer of the ECMID uh, Executive Office, Professor Jesus Rodriguez Baño who is also the Professor of Medicine and Infectious Diseases at the University Hospital of the Virgin Macarena in Sevilla, Spain. So a very warm welcome to you, uh, Jesus. Happy Thank to have you, you here. And um, well, first of all, I am wondering, how are you experiencing this year's ECMID so far? Well, it's a very special ECMID, as everybody knows and, and everybody can, can witness. It's something that we've never done before is such a big congress done uh, fully online but i have to say that uh, we are very much satisfied first with the attendance we are very much surprised to have that huge attendance uh, for this type of activity which makes us think that pro probably in the future we need to incorporate some online activities during the congress although we we all want to go to face-to-face -face congress we, will, we need to meet each other we need to a network uh, by, by speaking to each other face to face. But, but of course, for some people, it would may be more difficult to travel or, or to come to ECMIT. So uh, I think that experience tell us that we need to incorporate these activities for future years. And, and well, I think that ECMIT program is, is outstanding as usual. And then this year, particularly, we have so many good activities. I, I've been attending a few in the fields that I most work on, like multi-track resistance or bloodstream infections, or, or but, but also some others in the other areas that 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 are so interesting, like basic science or or a treatment in other areas. So I, I really think that we are doing having a, a fantastic activity this year. Great. Could you could you just uh, lift one out of that one uh, one session or lecture that really uh, caught your interest? Well, I, I um, chair a couple of sessions that re were really fantastic. One, one was a keynote lecture by Dr. Getahun from uh, WHO. Um, Dr. Getahun explained uh, what is WHO uh, doing to achieve uh, the incorporation of antimicrobial stewardship uh, worldwide. And, and I think that was very interesting to know how WHO is considering this. Uh, his experience in previous programs like uh, tuberculosis program in general, but also in HIV positive patients, etc., will be for sure very helpful in in, in addressing mm. that. And that estimate as a society is collaborating heavily with with WHO in this field, and we will, we do hope that this collaboration will will go forward. Another very interesting session was a session on on, on bloodstream infection organized by the study group on on uh, bloodstream infection and sepsis, endocarditis and sepsis. In this session, Dr. Lopez Cortez and Dr. Madalena Gianella explained about bundles used in, in patients with bacteria. This is an activity that infectious disease and clinical microbiology we do every day. And the incorporation of these bundles uh, for the care of patients with bloodstream infections improve their outcomes. And, and, and ongoing work, work in, in this area will help us to, to improve and be more efficient in our work in there, for example. Okay, so would you go as far as saying that this is, this is definitely even practice changing uh, for you yeah absolutely yeah and, and well this morning we have a fantastic also uh, late breaker sessions in with several results from some randomized trials were shown um, and also some uh, huge uh, observational studies and, and and as you said this this uh, uh, research are very very probably going to change some aspect of clinical practice we we We'll be seeing whether this uh, information will be incorporated to guidelines in the near future. And we are very proud that this, uh, this uh, studies are presented at, at ECMID. We're, we're better, uh, where so many people can see them, can discuss them, and, and the chats yeah. you know, are really burning with questions. So it is fantastic. Yeah, and just to hook back on what you said a little, little earlier, um, about um, the conference, missing the, the connection with the people, seeing them face to face, but also seeing the, the great advantages of an online event, um, because some people just cannot manage to visit each ECMID. Uh, do you feel it's getting a more global event rather than just a European uh, Congress? 
Well, definitely. Uh, ESCMIT as a society uh, years ago already became a worldwide society. So we, we are stuck and we are faced, uh, based in Europe. But our mission and our vision to uh, increase research, provide uh, good guidance and guidelines, and promote science in the fields of infectious disease and clinical microbiology, and help our colleagues all over the world to do their work in the better conditions. Well, this vision is 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 global. So, uh, and and we are very happy to have members from all over the world to have attendance or activity from all over the world, and and we are proud to have them as part of our society and and their input. And the work uh, is is uh, very valuable. So yes, we we need to 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 we, we've been working for for many years in 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 how to incorporate that. Uh, we are very much uh, trying to think of how to improve the possibilities that ESCMIT has to collaborate, particularly in low and middle income countries. We yes. we do think that these are areas uh where help is probably much needed and and probably our role in those areas could be something that that we should enforce we are considering how to improve that uh, uh, finding ways to uh, grant our colleagues from those countries to attend ECNIC, to attend our courses to attend our activities we are working to have an, an, an e-academy and, and an online academy for oral uh, educational activities directed by our uh, education officer dr robert Skov. Also for the scientific activities uh, directed by John uh, uh, Friedland and everything. So uh, really, we we need to be uh, present and helping everywhere in the world. Wow, really great uh, examples of uh, ESCMED reaching beyond their own borders of uh, of Europe uh, to out well the whole globe actually. Um, I would like to zoom in a little bit more on your role in the uh, executive committee of ESCMED now. Um, of course, as immediate past president, you have the expertise and, and uh, 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 to, to help um, um, get this mission uh, that you just described uh, up and running. But also you are serving as the current guidelines officer. And I think it would be interesting for our uh, viewers to hear a little bit more about this specific role. What does the guidelines officer have um, c regarding tasks and re responsibilities and how do you collaborate with the ESCMID members and study groups to achieve uh, a really good updated versions of all guidelines? Well, as you said, my now long experience in, in estimate executive committee um, that will be finishing in one year from now oh. <laughs> um, has provided me with, with some experience in how the society works and, and what are the, I would say, uh, ways to try to improve some of the aspects. Uh, a few years ago, we uh, modified our and, and, and completely changed the way that we were addressing guidelines. So first, we, we were clear that guidelines is a priority in our society. Guidelines helps our members and, this, and, the, commu and the infectious disease and clinical microbiology community, but also colleagues from other medical specialties to, uh, to use uh, uh, best evidence to take their decisions, because we, we have to, to take into account that infections occur in all type of medical specialties. So all, all medical specialties have to have some information about that. Of course, our role is to be there to provide consultation or sometimes to take uh, directly the decision. But all the times we are consultants or we are doing stewardship. Uh, and then uh, uh, we need to provide uh, the best evidence possible to take medical decisions. So um, uh, it was very much imposed by Dr. Rebellina Taconelli when she was in the executive committee uh, and, and we, we selected uh, Dr. Julia Scudeller from, from Italy, as well as, as guidelines director. Uh, she's doing an outstanding job. And we have an education and, and guidelines subcommittee from, formed by a fantastic group of, of members that are helping, working very hard and helping us uh, to do the work. So we decided that the, the, the procedure had to be uh, both a top down and, 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 and bottom up uh, procedures first to uh, select the topics. Uh, considering what other guidelines are they have published in the world, what areas are uh, have more important gaps, uh, so we we tell our members to, to uh, in, in open calls to tell us which topics would, would be a priority for them. We send, let's say push them or or help them to develop a proposal for that, 
and then we start working on a specific project uh, with our with our colleagues in the in the subcommittee. Uh, you know, methodological issues in guidelines are now complex because we need to be very transparent. We need to uh, really address evidence in the best ways possible so that everybody is confident that the guidelines are performing in an appropriate way. We need to be very independent from, uh, from uh, stakeholders. We need to count on them, but at the same time, we need to be very independent in our opinions as a society. And this process is complex, it's hard, yeah. it's a lot of work. Every, every single guideline involves a good number of people that dedicates and a lot of time, yeah. yeah. And the final output is, is a document that we need to implement, we need to help the implementation, we need to discuss publicly, and we need to keep updated. So it's, it's a fantastic activity, but I can tell you that it's really hard work. Challenging, yes. Yes, because it, well, often you, you may even think that when uh, you finally deliver the guidelines uh, physically, that they're finished, that, that's the, that, that, that it's done then, but then the implementation, I think, it, it, is, it, is it almost as, as big a job? It Getting is. it implemented in that many countries, different... Uh... I can give you an, an outline, is that we will very soon be uh, uh, putting in public consultation our new guidelines for the treatment of multidrug resistant grand negative bacteria, which have taken us like three years to develop. Yeah. And thanks to the uh, work in the group, uh, we hope that the these guidelines will be, as I said, in public consultation for our members very, very soon. And after that, we will, we will submit it for publication in our uh, CMI journal. So we do hope that this guideline will help us to treat these patients. Better. Yeah. So how many guidelines on, on a yearly basis uh, are coming out from ESCMID's uh, study we include group? Every year, uh, we we can include up to four new uh, projects. Uh, typically, uh, this project takes a couple of years to, of to, to develop, yeah. or sometimes even more. And also, we also collaborate and endorse guidelines from other that are led or that we collaborate with other medical societies, international societies. We work together with IDSA, for example, from the United States in some guidelines. Of, or, or uh, as I said, from other societies. So at, at this at this point, we are involved one way or the other in 16 uh, uh, projects. That means that a lot of people are working on that in the society, and I would really like to thank all of them to, to for yeah. developing this work. So in what ways is the ECMID important for uh, creating and updating guidelines? Well, I think it's, it's one of our main roles as a so so society. For example, I, I also want to say that we are, we, we are also uh, finishing our work in some COVID-19 guidelines. Mm. We, we were not in a hurry to, to set up our guidelines because at the very beginning, the, the evidence was very uh, scarce and, and, and very arguable. And we thought that uh, the evidence could be changing rapidly. So we preferred to wait a little bit. And, and now we are finishing four set of guidelines on, on COVID-19 different aspects like infection control or, or diagnosis of treatment. And we are That's quite impressive, them. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're expecting them to be out also soon. Wow. Well, so very busy on that uh, on that area as well. Um, are there any uh, um, sessions or lectures during this ECMED that also um, in, um, that also um, in which also the uh, guidelines, new guidelines, are involved? Uh, is there anything being presented this ECMED? Uh, because we typically present when a guideline is finished or is about to be finished or, or is already on public consultation, we typically present some of them in, in ECMID. Uh, we do that either as a formal presentation or a case-based presentation that we've yeah. done uh, some years before. But this year, um, we didn't have any on that point. So this is why we did not include any. No. Okay, so the timelines didn't cross this year. Yeah, it depends yeah. On, on when the guidelines are finished. I would say. Okay, okay. So you are, um, if I can just uh, summarize, I hope I got it correct. Um, but if 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 it's up to you, next year ECMID will it be a live event or will it be be a hybrid event? Well, this, I, I would not like to forget, at, at the very beginning, we talk about some sessions that I enjoyed and like, yeah. well, I, I would like everyone, I recommend everyone to, to uh, because uh, thank God we can look at them for three months after the Congress is finished, we can mm -hmm. 
yeah. go back and review. We have time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the, the Excellence Award talk that was given by Professor Hermann Gusens, I think that it was so inspiring. Uh, he's developed a lot of co uh, uh, collaborative work to develop uh, networks uh, in which uh, uh, randomized trials can be performed across Europe and all, and, and all the continents. And I do recommend everyone to, to have a look at them. Well, you were talking about um, hybrid. Yeah, I think that, uh, as I said uh, in the beginning, we learned that. We learned that uh, this is probably the way to go forward. I don't think that we can uh, or we should uh, uh, avoid uh, meeting in person. I think that meeting in person is so important for many, many aspects. But again, uh, sometimes there are many colleagues who cannot attend for yeah. some of them getting grants to, to, to travel far away is very expensive, not easy. And, in, and in, in, even if we would like to have them uh, face to face with us, I think we, we can do something to help them to attend by providing all the content or, or, or most of the content also online. So we are working on how to do that. We're working on how to, what are the models that we can implement but we have very good ideas, I think. So I, I, would, I, I think that people will be surprised to, to see. I mean, they will be willing to come face to face, but if they don't come, they will find that they cannot really attend that. Day. Yeah, great. Well, thank you so much for giving us an insight in your, in your role as current guidelines officer um, and, and how guidelines creation, the process uh, works. Um, and also for giving your views um, based on your experience as a, in the executive committee for so many years already uh, on, on how we should move forward with uh, ESCMID and ECMID um, to include uh, a greater range of, of, of countries, uh, diverser um, um, uh, origins of our members so um, to get it uh, truly to a global global organization so thank you so much for providing that extra insight uh, to our viewers and for taking the time to come here via live stream thank you my pleasure thank you very much for our viewers we will be back at the clock of four o'clock um, with Christian Giska um, who is uh, um, a representative for the UCAS. So we will be talking a little bit more about uh, antimicrobial susceptibility testing. So very interesting topic. Please tune in at four o'clock and we will be back then. See you then. Mm -hmm.